This is New Cap News with Nerman Esau. Good evening. It was a situation that could have turned worse last night after a home invasion at a rural residence north of Lloyd Minster. Now, Kids Cuddy RCMP say a male and female suspect had forced their way into the home and threatened the occupants with a baseball bat. One of the occupants was able to escape to a neighboring home. Now, when the suspects finally fled, the homeowner called police. The occupants of the residence suffered minor injuries. Now, RCMP have arrested 34-year-old Christy Tizard of Vegreville. She was remanded into custody on three counts, including assault with a weapon, forcible confinement, and break and enter. But police are still looking for the male suspect, and they're asking for the public's help. Now, he is described as a Caucasian, about 5'11", weighing 180 to 190 pounds, clean-shaven, and has short, cropped hair. He was wearing a dark-colored sweater, sweater or hoodie, blue jeans, and carrying a dark or maroon aluminum baseball bat. Anyone with information is asked to call RCMP or Crime Stoppers. Well, Lloyd Mr. RCMP are asking for the public's help in finding a couple of suspects following an armed robbery in the city. Police are investigating the violent incident that happened on Wednesday in the 3200 block of 57th Avenue. Now, 25-year-old Charlene Wright of Lloyd Minster was arrested and charged before being released on bail. Now, police are still looking for two other individuals that they suspect were also involved. Now, warrants have been issued for 26-year-old Terrence Stonechild and 30-year-old Candace Stonechild. Candace, Candace is currently wanted on a Canada-wide parole warrant for being unlawfully at large for convictions of robbery. Meanwhile, Terrence Stonechild is also wanted wanted by police in relation to another matter that also involves violence. Police believe this was a targeted robbery. Both individuals are considered to be armed and dangerous. Now, anyone with information can contact RCMP or Crime Stoppers. The Travel Alberta CEO has been under fire this week after claims from the Wild Rose Tourism Critic came to light on some major expenses being billed to taxpayers. MLA Rick Strinkman spent the week grilling the Minister of Tourism, Parks and Recreation, Richard Starkey, on the matter. Bart Patiasek reports. So why did the Minister accept a $99 claim, a $150 tuxedo rental, <laughs> amongst other dubious claims, or did he just not do his job? For three days in a row, tourism critic Rick Strankman and Richard Starkey exchanged words in question period over what the Wild Rose Party calls questionable expenses. $2,000 dinner, $1,000 dinner, $8,800 flight, $900 dinner, uh, $2,700 expense uh, posting with no... Um, uh, receipt to acknowledge uh, what the posting is about. This week, Strankman sent a letter to the Auditor General about his concerns. Even showing up to the Assembly in a tuxedo, he says he rented with his own money. Driving home, his point. It's simply an in-your-face uh, acknowledgement by myself and many members that uh, that this department is out of control. Starkey disagrees, saying the multi-million dollar marketing agency follows the rules. There's a very specific hosting policy and expense policy involved for Travel Alberta, and Travel Alberta follows the government of Alberta's overall expense policy. What's critical is to make sure that that policy has been followed to the letter, that there have been no abuses of taxpayers' funds. Now Starkey isn't taking the criticism lightly. Starting a full third-party review in Travel Alberta spending over the last year, to see if all money spent is above board. If they are, then everything's okay. If they are not, those expenses, the inappropriate ones, will be reconciled and the errors will be corrected. A good first step according to Strankman, but says he wants to see reparations. Particularly in the case of the alcoholic beverages, uh, I'd like to see the employees pay them back and uh, there might be some p potentiality of their dismissal. Starkey says he hopes to see the results of the report by the end of the month. Bart Pediasek. New Cap News. A former Lloyd Minster resident upped the stakes with his barbecue invention on CBC's Dragon's Den well, on Wednesday night. Now, Troy Beaver presented the Dragons with his flavor fork invention. And as Anastasio explains, well, the response was quite juicy. How many of you have ever served or eaten dried out chicken, pork, beef, or turkey? And while eating it, wondered where the flavor is? Well, wonder no more. The answer? is flavor fork. 
Troy Beaver captured the attention of the dragons with his invention, which he describes as a hybrid of a fork, brush, baste, or spatula, bottle opener, and flavor injector. I was just trying to make my meals taste differently or taste better in certain circumstances, um, and uh, in playing around with uh, different sauces, different methods of cooking, whether it be barbecue or roasting or frying or baking. It took Troy about two years to get his idea going, but it eventually paid off. Dragons Bruce Croxon and Arlene Dickinson both had enticing offers, but in the end, he went with Arlene. And I spoke with uh, Larry from OMGs and Arlene. Oh, did you? I'd love to work with you. He says you're a great partner. Oh, that's awesome. I'd like to accept your deal. There was a little bit of, of uh, you know, kind of starstruckness. Uh, I respect them a lot. So. Uh, being in front of them, but at the same time, uh, I was there for a purpose and uh, prepared for it. I was pretty calm when I finally got to do it. Troy says the response has been great and his products, which are sold at home hardware and Canadian Tire, have been selling out. There's nothing else on the market that would compare to it uh, as far as its functionality and, and purpose. So uh, I was lucky to have that and, uh, and you know, kind of all of it just falling in place. What time, what time is, is it? It is time to join the flavor revolution. Anna Stanislau, Newcap News. The city of Lloydminster has issued a spring thaw warning advising residents to be cautious of thin ice. Now, due to the spring-like weather, ice conditions are unstable at various lakes around the city. That includes Bud Miller Park as well as several community rinks. Very dangerous. Uh, with the amount of water that's running underneath the ice, uh, ice conditions can change rapid, rapidly, and so uh, uh, residents are advised to stay away. Snow and ice will be removed periodically from city streets and catch basins to ensure proper drainage. Uh, we're making sure that all of our storm uh, channels are flowing properly and making sure that all of our catch basins are flowing properly and the retention lakes are one part of the system in order to ensure that, uh, that we get the water flowing. The city is asking homeowners to be cautious of melting snow on their property, which could cause seepage or other problems. Parents are also being advised to keep children away from lakes and other icy surfaces. Now, For, for a full list of closures for the season, visit the city's website at lloydminster.ca.